Today is Thursday, January 28th. We'll tell you about a rare national terrorism warning, what the government now says is the biggest threat here at home, and how climate change could be, for the first time, a key priority in every level of the federal government. Also, new advice from the World Health Organization about who should skip getting the COVID-19 vaccine for now. Plus, leaders in Washington are weighing in about that ongoing power shift on Wall Street, the Apple update that could keep you from getting hacked, and what's now considered Netflix's biggest show ever. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. The U.S. government used a federal alert system to warn people about a threat of domestic terrorism. The Department of Homeland Security, known as DHS, has not cited any specific plot. But the warning says there's a lot of anger, especially from claims about the 2020 presidential election, and that anger could lead some people to launch attacks in the coming weeks. The last time that warning system was used, it was to tell Americans that Iran might try to retaliate over the U.S. assassination of their military commander, Qasem Soleimani, in January 2020. But now DHS says the biggest threats to Americans are violent extremists here at home. Even though the election results and some conspiracy theories around them were listed as the top motivator for this, there are some others, too. The department also points to anger over COVID-19 restrictions, opposition to immigration, and longstanding racial and ethnic tensions. And some people might have been emboldened by the invasion of the U.S. Capitol building earlier this month. The purpose of this warning is to make regular American citizens aware of a risk so they know what to keep an eye out for. The risk is said to be high for the next few weeks. It's being called the most ambitious American effort to stop the worst damage from climate change. In fact, President Biden is calling climate change a matter of national security, and he's linking his efforts to fight it with a way to boost the economy, telling all major government departments to take action in their own way. To start, President Biden signed more executive actions all about the planet. And one of the most controversial measures Biden signed does not allow oil and gas companies to lease federal land for drilling, at least temporarily. Though it will not impact drilling already underway, and the administration says the oil industry still has access to millions of acres of American lands not owned by the federal government. But 30 Republican lawmakers put out a statement about this, calling the action a, quote, assault on American energy, as well as the good jobs and low energy costs that go with it. A Wyoming lawmaker says Western oil producing states like his could be especially hard hit as companies look to other states or even overseas. But Biden is arguing jobs and climate policies can actually go hand in hand. The president promised to create millions of good paying union jobs for people doing work like building electric cars, installing solar panels and wind turbines, plus more specialized work to turn old industrial sites into what Biden called new hubs of economic growth. To be continued. Your taxpayer dollars meant for public health emergencies were misused. That's at least what the Health and Human Services Department's inspector general, who looks out for any misconduct at the department, is now saying. The federal watchdog pointed to a little-known office within the department called the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority, known as BARDA for short. Well, BARDA is supposed to help finance vaccine research and preparing for pandemics. But investigators say hundreds of millions of dollars went to unrelated activities instead, like removing office furniture, legal services, and some employee salaries. It apparently went on between 2007 and 2016, and another $25 million was taken out of BARDA's funding as recently as 2019. So yes, this issue spans the Bush, Obama, and Trump administrations. In fact, diverting funds away from this office was apparently so common, employees had a name for it, the Bank of BARDA. But the last two people responsible for watching over that budget say they have not done anything wrong. Now, the Health and Human Services Department is reviewing this issue and has hired an outside accounting firm to audit the agency. There are new plans to ramp up COVID-19 vaccine deliveries. President Biden says he wants to make sure the U.S. has enough doses to vaccinate the whole U.S. population with two shots by the end of the summer. The administration plans to buy 200 million more doses and start boosting state supplies as soon as next week. Now, this new purchase will add on to the 400 million doses bought last year. But of course, having the vaccines and actually putting needles in arms are two different things. The new COVID-19 response coordinator says the U.S. is still facing shortages of personal protective gear and other essential supplies. So he's calling on Congress to provide the funding through an economic relief plan ASAP. Well, speaking of COVID-19 vaccines, the World Health Organization is now telling most pregnant women to skip getting vaccinated, at least for now. 
It's actually the same as the guidance Pfizer and Moderna have already provided. And remember, those drug makers are behind the only two vaccines available in the U.S. right now. The reason for this new recommendation? It's just lack of data. Neither company enrolled pregnant women in their vaccine trials, though both say they plan to study it in the future. But keep in mind, pregnant women are said to be at higher risk of having a severe case of COVID-19, and the CDC is still allowing pregnant people to choose to be vaccinated if they want. Also, the WHO said the shots are likely okay for moms of breastfeeding children. All right, more news is coming up, but first, a quick break for our sponsor. If you don't feel like you really know what's in your daily multivitamin and why it's there, then it might be time to switch. Some might have sugars, GMOs, synthetic fillers, artificial colorants, or just other shady extras. But Ritual is different. I've been taking Ritual vitamins for several months now. I was originally interested because of the company's transparency about their ingredients and their sourcing, so I can feel confident about what I'm putting in my body every day. And I like that the multivitamins are scientifically developed to help support different life stages for women, pregnant women, men, and teens. And it's so nice that Ritual vitamins are actually fresh tasting. So holding your nose is not required like it sometimes is with other types. And Ritual makes the process so easy too. My vitamins are delivered every month with free shipping always. And of course, you can start, snooze, or cancel your subscription anytime. You deserve to know what's in your multivitamin. That's why Ritual is offering the Newsworthy listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash newsworthy to start your ritual today. That's ritual.com slash newsworthy. Okay, now back to the news. The wild week and power shift on Wall Street continues, and now even Washington is weighing in. The SEC and Treasury Secretary are both said to be keeping an eye on the situation, and it's not clear if federal regulators will eventually step in. Remember, as we told you yesterday, millions of small-time investors are coming together on platforms like Reddit to take on some of the most sophisticated investors. These rookies, together, have sent some unexpected stocks soaring. Think GameStop, AMC, and BlackBerry. GameStop, the once-troubled video game retailer, has gotten the most attention. And its stock value shot up again yesterday, now up more than 1,700% since December. All while some of the high-powered professional investors who bet against those companies are losing billions of dollars because of it. In fact, at least one online brokerage connecting buyers and sellers took the rare step of not allowing some of these transactions to even go through. TD Ameritrade says it's now putting restrictions in place because of what it calls unprecedented market conditions. At this point, no one knows how this will end. Some people are now questioning whether investors coming together on social media should be considered market manipulation, which is not allowed. But others feel the newbie investors are in the clear, and it's actually just giving the underdogs a little more power in the market. Stay tuned. If you have an iPhone or iPad, Apple wants you to update it as soon as possible. That's because its latest software update fixes three security flaws that hackers could exploit. Apple has not spelled out the specifics of the security flaws, but it says one of them affects the nerve center for Apple's operating system, iOS. The other two affect the browser engine used by Safari and other apps. And apparently Apple found out about these issues because of anonymous researchers. Its new update is for the iPhone 6 and later, as well as the iPad Air 2 and later. The update came out Tuesday, so the company says if you have not updated in the last two days, now is the time. Hollywood has suffered a huge loss this week. Oscar and Emmy-winning actress Cloris Leachman has died. Leachman's publicist said she passed away in her sleep yesterday at 94 years old. She's probably most famous for her role as Phyllis Lindstrom on the popular 1970s sitcom The Mary Tyler Moore Show. But Leachman also starred in a slew of other TV shows and movies like Lassie, Young Frankenstein, The Facts of Life, and Malcolm in the Middle. Her TV career took off in the late 1940s, and she has hardly slowed down since. In fact, she recently appeared in the film Jump Darling, which was released just last year. Tributes have been pouring in ever since the news of her death broke. For example, legendary director, writer, and producer Mel Brooks wrote on Twitter, she is irreplaceable and will be greatly missed. Netflix says Bridgerton is now its biggest series of all time. In case you're not familiar, Bridgerton is the romantic drama produced by Shonda Rhimes based on novels by Julia Quinn. It debuted on the streaming platform last month, and since then, more than 82 million households or accounts have watched. Or in other words, more than 40% of all Netflix subscribers gave the show a shot in the last four weeks. That's a record that even beat out other big hits like The Witcher, Stranger Things, and Lupin. Netflix says Bridgerton blew away its expectations, and it's now been renewed for a second season. Deadline reports season two will start filming this spring. 
The Sundance Film Festival kicks off today. Usually thousands of filmmakers, actors, and movie fanatics flock to Park City, Utah for the event. But this year, the festival will be mostly virtual instead, of course, because of the pandemic. And that means people will be watching the films online from home, and things like director Q&As will be done remotely as well. Sundance will also have fewer feature films this year, and the overall festival will be a few days shorter. If you want to check out Sundance from home, the festival runs through February 3rd. And at last check, most passes were sold out, but there are still tickets you can buy for single films. That's it for the main news today, but now it's time for Thing to Know Thursday. But first, this episode is brought to you by 1010. Now, you may have read about this in the New York Times, InStyle Magazine, or Forbes, and we're excited to tell you about it as well. 1010 is an exclusive collection of 10 one-of-a-kind engagement rings designed by 10 of the most distinctive designers working today. Using only diamonds responsibly sourced from Botswana, 10 design masters have each produced a uniquely beautiful commitment ring. They're available right now exclusively on BlueNile.com. But when they're gone, they're gone. We all know the diamond engagement ring is iconic. It's a timeless expression of the deepest commitment between two people. And with 1010, it's been beautifully re-envisioned in the hands of 10 modern designers working exclusively with sustainably sourced diamonds. If you're on the hunt for the perfect, unique ring to wear forever, you're definitely going to want to check this out. Again, this exciting limited edition collection of diamond engagement rings just launched, and you can find it exclusively at BlueNile.com. And now back to Thing to Know Thursday. And today's thing to know is that the world just marked International Holocaust Remembrance Day. Specifically, the day marks the liberation of the Auschwitz concentration camp. But in an even larger sense, it's a reason to acknowledge the history of the Holocaust and hopefully learn from it. This is especially important these days. Last fall, a survey found nearly a quarter of American adults under the age of 40 think the Holocaust was a myth, exaggerated, or they just did not know anything about it. So it's worth repeating. The Holocaust did really happen. Prisoners were tortured in concentration camps, and ultimately, Nazi Germany killed 6 million Jews and about 5 million others, mostly in the 1940s. Normally, memorial events happen every Holocaust Remembrance Day. But this year, because of the pandemic, many of those moved online. Also, there were survivors who decided to use the occasion to get a COVID-19 vaccine. One 97-year-old Holocaust survivor who recently received the shot reflected on everything she's been through. She also survived actually getting the virus. But she said, quote, it is fantastic when you can say for everything, I managed, I am here, I went through it, and I am here. She added that as long as you have hope, everything can happen. And that's your thing to know today. All right, thank you so much for listening today. We will be back tomorrow with much more news to know. Until then, have a great day.